West for Kedar, there is a small continent called Thiliaras. Thiliaras is a special place, inhabited by all kinds of creatures. Unlike Kedar, Thiliaras is not home to any humans, but instead inhabited by elves. Within this continent, there is an empire called Lorien. On the northwestern plains in Lorien lies the duchy of Forten, a small area covered with farms and fields with tight gravel roads separating them from each other. Old Golin's mill is still running, but his son is now in charge there. Jarvik Golin was a proud owner of the Golin mill. It's an old house with strong and firm beams to hold the large mill stable. Under the mill is a crystal clear river surrounded by patches of grass and tall rummer trees. Jarvik's grandson, Grith, is helping out his father with chores and work at the mill, to prepare himself for the day he will inherit it himself. Grith was asked to go to the woods to find some red top mushrooms to bring home for dinner, so he did as he was told and headed for the nearby rummer wood. He walks across the flower fields and tall trees as the shadows of the forest envelops him. Grith enjoys the dark forest. He loves the tension and excitement it gives him when he's confronted by something unsettling. But this day would turn out different than usual. As Grith walks past the dark majestic trees in search for mushrooms, he hears a faint howl in the distance. He looks around, waiting for the sound once again. It gets closer, and the howl is sharp and terrifying. He looks around nervously and picks up a wooden branch. He holds it like a sword, ready to face whatever is coming his way. He hears footsteps, loud, heavy, crushing the fallen autumn leaves on the ground. Behind the trees in front of him, a large black wolf appears. It's standing on two legs, covered in black fur with a furious look and knife-sharp claws. It's staring right into Grith's eyes, growling and barking at him. Behind him appears two more. Grith, a 15-year-old boy wielding a rotten tree branch facing three black wolves, is nowhere near an even match. His breath is getting out of control. His hands are getting sweatier, and the branch finally slips out of his grip. The wolf walks closer to him, but then Grith notices a shadow among the trees. Beneath the countless quantities of leaves, Grith can manage to get a glimpse of a shadow, running past him before disappearing behind one of the trees. The wolf comes closer, and Grith is backing off slowly, ready to sprint all the way home. The shadow reappears, jumping and landing in front of Grith, facing the wolves wielding a long and thin greatsword. The figure's hood falls off and reveals his silver-colored hair. He looks at Grith. His face is somewhat thin, with a scar above his right eye which seems to be blind and pupilless. Another scar goes across his mouth and left cheekbone. He is clean-shaven and wears a black, long cape. He has to be at least 198 centimeters tall and about 25 years of age. His face is a clear sign of an old war hero. However, something about him is foreign. He's not a regular Thiliarian and he's also too young to be a veteran. Go home, he says, and looks back at the black wolves. He rushes over to the one in the front cutting its head off while grabbing the left one with his hand. He smashes the wolf's face into the ground and kicks the left one in the chest. He jumps back and pulls up two throwing knives, which goes flying into both wolves. He rests the sword on his shoulder and breathes out. The wolves howl in pain and call for reinforcements. Several of them comes running through the forest and the knight runs into the crown of wolves, and spins around with his sword like a whirlwind, unleashing a maelstrom of blood. You think that was the last of them? He asks Grith as he sits down on one of the wolves' head. I think so, that was unbelievable, Grith answers, still shocked. You live nearby? I could use somewhere to rest for the night if it's not too much to ask, the man says and gets up after cleaning the blood off of his blade. Yes, of course, you, you saved my life. I will introduce you to my parents and thank you, Grith answers, 
bowing his head in gratitude. The man walks over to him and puts his hand on the boy's head. You plan to fight them yourselves, brave kid. That's inspiring to me, he says while faking a smile. The two of them walk back out of the woods without any mushrooms, but with their limbs intact at least. They arrive at Griff's mill and enter the house. The room is warm and calm, with a burning fireplace and a strong smell of freshly baked honeytots. Mother, father, you need to come, Griff yells, and a lanky farmer with a big mustache appears. Next to him is a big woman with a warm smile and honeytot dough in her hands. And who might this be? the man says, looking the knight up and down. He is the shadow hunter, Griff answers excitingly. There was these giant black wolves that tried to eat me and he killed all of them. It was so amazing. The couple looks at the knight with a shocked expression. Is that true? the woman says. Well, this guy did half the job himself, the knight says, patting Griff on the back of his head. The couple embrace their child and express how happy they are that he is okay. We should never have sent you out there, my boy. How can we ever repay you? the man say, looking at the tall silver-haired knight. You don't owe me anything, but I could use a warm bed for the night, he answers again, forcing a smile. Of course, you can stay here for as long as you want, the mother says, with tears in her eyes, rushing back to the kitchen to finish her meal for us. The man leads me into a bedroom which belonged to Griff's old brother who left the mill some months ago. This room is yours for the night. It belonged to Borian, our oldest child. He's not with us anymore, the man says. I'm sorry to hear that. Death is never welcomed, the knight answers. He didn't die. Worse. He joined the forces of Urien. He's no longer a part of us. No matter how much we love him, we can't bear the burden of having raised a traitor. We valleys stay with each other to the end. I see. The Civil War. I don't know much about it. I'm a foreigner. Suddenly, the father leans in and looks the knight dead in the eyes. If I find out that you work for Urien or anyone in his ranks, I'll cut you down where you stand, he whispers. I'm not. The knight answers, and the man smiles kindly again. Well, that's good to hear. Ask if you need anything, foreigner. My name is Garth, Gris's father. I didn't catch your name earlier, the man says. It's Gulder. My name is Gulder. Garth nods and leaves the room. Gulder sits down on the bed with his hands stroking his forehead. He rests on the pillow on his bed and closes his eyes. The only thing I can see is a land covered with the most beautiful flowers a man could witness. On the plains he can see a red-haired woman, and behind her is his hometown, Boltingbrook. He can see his childhood home, the farms, his parents, home. Before drifting to sleep, he hears Chris's mother shout, Dinner is ready, from the kitchen. He gets up, a little dizzy and still sweaty, but walks down to eat with them. The dinner table is that of a farmer's, pretty small and oval-shaped, with an old white piece of cloth barely covering the whole table. The dinner seems pretty similar to that of Kedarian cuisine, but with some slight differences. The main course is the ribs of a Volran. They look similar to Kedar's boars, but a tad whiter and considerably smaller. It tastes meaty and peppery, with a touch of herbs. It's served together with mashed abels and curds, and some other roots and vegetables. A small wooden bowl is filled with gallberry jam, a sort of dark velvet berry with a bitter taste that improves the overall experience of the wool run ribs. Next to it is a large mug containing lots of rinker juice, a sweet and kind of sour juice made with huge rinkers and sugar-coated rinker seeds. Garth, the father, brings two large mugs with some kind of rinker cedar, containing alcohol and a pure and rich flavor. Some rinker cedar, for the adults. Grith needs to wait another year before he gets the chance to drink this, he says, placing it next to Galder's plate while Grith looks jealously at the large mug. Galder and the family feast throughout the evening, while the hot fire from the fireplace warms the entire room. So, what's your story, outsider? Why are you here? 
Garth says after finishing his ring crusader. I don't think I can go into much detail, but a large fight was going on and I was accused of taking responsibility of something I shouldn't have according to the Emperor of Chaldean. So yeah, I was banished here, leaving everyone I knew behind. Oh my, the Emperor of Chaldean? Garth says in a startled tone. Have you met the Emperor? What was he like? And the prince? And his sister, the princess? Were they as cool as the stories tell? Grith starts shouting, obviously very invested. Galdor looks at Grith with an angered expression and says, The Emperor forced me out of my home for risking my life. I have no good words to say about him, nor his lineage. The room turns quiet. Sorry, kid. My son can be a bit hasty sometimes, Garth says, looking deeply disappointed. I am sorry. I got hot-headed, but every word I said was true. What do you plan on doing here, though? Do you plan to settle down? My brother has a daughter who's looking for a groom. Maybe you're interested in settling down here in Fortin. Thank you, but I am only looking for a way back. That's my only goal for now, Galder answers, looking down at the table. I see, I see. Well, there's not too much to do in Thiliaras in these times. Not after the civil war, that is. Grith is going to the market district in the big city tomorrow. Might want to join him and see if you can find some work there. That would be nice. I could use some work, Galder responds. And with that, they all retreat to their bedrooms. Galder takes off his clothes and puts them in a pile next to his bed. He walks over to a barrel of water in his room and cleans his face. He looks down on his chest. The scar from half a year ago is still there. Shinkensu sure left a mark on him. The next morning, Grith wakes up and sees Galdur rest outside. He's sitting on a rock next to the mill wheel and watch the river flowing past him. You ready? Grith asks. Galdur nods and gets up, and they both set out for the city. After walking for a while, they finally see the big city in front of them. It's the capital city in the Duchy of Fulton. It's called Fable. When entering, Galdur's first eye-catcher is the abnormal houses and the weird lights. The usual houses have unique patterns carved into the wood. Others have icons that resemble flowers in some kind of pattern, and others have sun and moon icons. They look like some sort of emblem of royalty. The greater the house, the more grandiose the patterns seem to be. Galdur looks at each house thoroughly and examines the decorations enveloping all the entrances he walks by. He looks up and sees that the city is filled by some sort of floating lanterns, probably affected by elven spells. We don't have this kind of magic back home, Galdur says while carefully touching the lanterns. The flame within them are some sort of purple shade and they form a straight line towards the town square where the mayor resides. Walking further into the elven city, Galdur noticed all kinds of shops for tailoring, smithing and other kinds of equipment. There are blacksmiths and shopkeepers on both sides of the street. All seem to be doing well and the shops are clean and organized. However, there is something that slightly unsettles Galdur. As they walk through the streets, the common elf around him is giving Grith an ugly look. And when they notice Galdur walking next to him, they even start to look a bit furious. I'm sorry, Mr. Galdur, we need to move quick. We're not supposed to be here, Grith says as he grabs his arm and leads him into a back alley. Through the back alley, Grith seems somewhat scared and uncomfortable. But as soon as they reach the end of the alley, he catches his breath and starts to calm down. They arrive at a considerably nastier looking place. The houses lack the decorations they saw earlier, and there is barely any lanterns here. The streets are unkept and quite hideous, and the people here is clearly different from the ones you just saw. They all look like Grith, shorter than the regular elves with a blue tone to their skin and even longer ears. Finally, we reach the Valias district. Grith grabs his hand and leads him down the dirty streets. The deeper they go, the more disgusting it gets. It seems extremely crowded.
People even live on top of each other, and most of them seem either drunk or sick. Galder looks at their face and notice how sad they look. They are tired, expressionless. Like someone just told them how worthless they are. That's the kind of attitude they embrace. Grith looks down and notice how unwell Galder is starting to get, before taking him into a tavern called The Glorious Days. Inside, people look fairly drunk or shady. Some are gambling, some are throwing up, and some are even playing around with prostitutes. The smell is unbearable, and the innkeeper does not look too happy about it either. We need to go to the market district. We need a craftsman to fix our mill back home. It's falling apart, Grith say, with an anxious look. The thing is that we're not allowed to be there. It's only for the others. The others? Gulder asks, confused. I can't talk about it. We, we need to be quick. He leads Gulder outside and shows him a narrow path which leads directly to the markets. There. I can manage to go through there, just wait here, I have to remain unseen. Grith sprints ahead. Galder watches him in confusion before leaning against the wall and wait for him to come back. Everyone who pass him give him an ugly look. Someone even calls him names like fucking outsider or short ears. Suddenly he hear a hard knock and Grith screaming as he falls over. Galder quickly look into the narrow street and see a craftsman with two guards standing over Grith, who bleeds from his forehead. Know your fucking place, the craftsman yells as the guards proceed to grab his arms. Stay the fuck where you belong, one of them says, and Galder finds an alternate way to them. He runs around the corner and see the guards carry Grith out of there as Galder say, Drop the kid, with an angered look. Oh, so the outsiders are walking amongst the livestock, are they? The guard says, looking at Galder. You should fucking watch your back when you're entering these disgusting areas, the guard says, and gives Avalia's elf a silver coin. Fucking traitor, you told him about us, Grith shouts, as the Valias elf runs away. What is happening, Galder says, and Grith responds while sobbing. He heard we were going to the market district and he sold us out for money. As they carry Grith away, another guard walks up to Galder from behind and knock him in the head with his sword hilt. Galder falls forward and pass out immediately. Two hours later, Galder wakes up in a cold, hard cell. The floor and ground is purely rock and in front of him are large iron bars. He stands up and see Grith sitting next to him in the cell, breathing out the cold air. You okay? Galder asks. I just want to go back home now, Grith answers. There is also a young man next to them sitting in the corner of the cell. He observes the two of them well. Who are you? Galder asks. Hionard. What are you in for? Murder. He answers calmly and cold-blooded. Grith looks at you with anxious eyes. Oh, come on, not someone like you. A noble. I murdered a noble. Why? Galder asks, standing close to Grith in a protective way. You've been to the Valias district lately? Hanard says, almost laughing. Yeah, what about it? You've been to the Valias district, you've seen the Valias district with your own eyes, and you have the guts to tell me why I murdered a noble? Hyanard says, standing up. Grith moves even closer to Galder, grabbing his arm in fear of Hyanard's sudden movement. Wait, oh fuck, you have short ears, never mind, he says, and sit down again. Of course you wouldn't know. He turns around and pulls off his shirt, revealing a badly designed tattoo of a crown. I am a redemptionist. What? The redemptionists. We fight to replace Freeman back on the throne. Who is Freeman? Galder asks, and both he and Art and Grith looks at him with confusion in their eyes. Oh, really? You're that kind of an outsider? Well, Freeman, son of Herbert IV. None of this rings a bell? He would say, as Galder shakes his head. Oh, please. He puts his hand on his forehead and say, The prince. 
The wonder should be sitting where that fucking Urian is sitting. Wait, did you say the prince? Galder says. He starts thinking. If he could find a prince or someone of that kind of royalty, he could eventually try to do them favors and earn respect. That way, he may someday be able to form some kind of royal pardon to send to the Emperor of Chaldean. Maybe this could be Galder's ticket home. I, I, I need to find him now, Galder yells, suddenly energized. For the first time in half a year, Galder has some kind of idea of maybe one day contacting Kedar and manage to come home. You don't simply find Freeman. If you could, he would be dead already, Yonard explains. Why do you speak in codes? Can someone tell me the whole fucking story of this, Galder says, still energized. Calm down, that would take ages, and we don't even have the full story, Yonard states and leans his head on the wall. Well, Grith, we have to get out of here. I, I got to find that prince no matter what. That would take ages, tall man. Even we, the Redemptionists, have no clue where to find him. I have to, even if it's going to take me a long time. Grith, Hionard, we need to find a way out of here, Galder says, and starts knocking on the iron bars. Welcome, guys, back to an AI dungeon adventure, Galder's Journey Book 2. I'm so happy to finally be able to start this journey with you guys. And after playing as Benedict for a while, I've really learned to miss Galder. He's like our first protagonist, he's our guy. We know him better than anyone else, so I'm so happy to be back in his story from his perspective. Uh, in a brand new continent, guys. A brand new story, a brand new world. Um, almost brand new characters I'm I'm so ready for this and you have to remember that we watch the world from Gulder's perspective so it's not much that makes sense now but I will upload a lore video where we will go through how this continent turned out to be what it is today so uh, everything will make sense in time but since we uh, watched this from Galder's perspective, we don't get a lot of background info. So everything seems kind of random at first, but that's like some of the magic of it. I'm really happy with the way this world world like turned out. And um, I have to give a big thanks to and a shout out to my brother Speeham for helping me uh, brainstorm together and giving me tips and advice to shape this world and helping me uh, create this uh, really cool plotline and uh, beginning. We kind of made it together and um, through ideas back and forth and he helped me like shape it and structure it better so that it would turn out like this and I'm really uh, really grateful for it and I think it turned out just really really awesome. Uh, so I'm really excited to head out to Thiliaras and Play as Galdra again, and I hope you are too. And my throat is a bit sore, so I'm sorry for that. Um, but uh, yeah, let's just start. Uh, let's write. Try to knock the iron bars out. Or yeah, like janked them out. You try to knock the iron bars out. Galder tries to knock out the iron bar while Heonard keeps watch. Eventually Galder gets a piece of wood and manages to break the bar in two. Oh wow, nice! Um Break Huh, is do you think that is enough to escape from here? Try to fit through the broken iron bar. If it's big enough, I think we can manage to like squeeze our way through it. But yeah, 
Gulder manages to fit through the iron bar, but only after tearing his clothes. Oh, okay, but it, it worked though. Ha, I wish I had something to cover myself. This is a dreary day. <laughs> wow, <laughs> okay, cool comment. <laughs> Calder, what the fuck? Um, let's add something to the story. Uh, Heonard and Grith follow Galder through the dungeon cell halls and you they manage to reach a door. Okay, so we got out of our cell. Let's see if we can get out of the dungeon. Um, a door, which is much larger and made of wood. What if we escape and, and the guards just let us out of another prison cell? Wouldn't that be a trap? What? <laughs> okay, retry. That made no sense. Um, okay, retry. Sorry, that was a battle. It appears that the dungeon keeper has decided to turn coat. Let's get the fuck out of here. Galder said, oh, which is surprisingly unlocked. Okay. Um, let's get the fuck out of here, Galder says, and they hurry through the corridor as guards run past them. Okay, so we barely slipped through the guards' watch and got out. You open the door to the... You know, let's, let's write, you search for a way to get Hmm. You open the door and walk walk through the hallways until you eventually uh, manage to get out. Let's not halt any longer in this um, dungeon. We have an adventure to do, you know. They find themselves in a long corridor with doors on either side, guarded by dead eyes. Galder pulls out a golden ring and flashes it at the door. Okay, retry. They stumble out of the door, barely evading swift guards who are waiting for them. They run through the halls, knocking over a couple of guards until they eventually manage to reach the armory and grab some weapons. Okay, our gear, I guess. We all grab our gear and um, get ready to face the guards. So it seems like uh, guards are blocking the um, door to the outside world. So I uh, guess we need to confront them. As the group uh, runs out of the armory, they manage to to kill a couple more guards. Galder grabs a halberd, Griff grabs a mace, and Hienard grabs a sword. Let's change it up to Galder grabs his long sword. Griff grabs a mace and Hienard grabs a sword. That's yeah, that's okay. Griff with a mace. Wow, badass fifteen year old boy. Okay, so um let's uh write you run down the hallway with your comrades and try to find a way out. The group runs as guards continue to appear. Even though they are guards of the Emperor, they have not been seen in years, so they are not exactly the best warriors. Um, well, okay, that makes sense, I guess. So, we are actually having a an advantage here against these veteran guards that, that's been unused for so long. Um, you find a door to the market district and run through it, blending into the crowd let's let's try to move on from this dungeon 
As the group reaches the door, they see a mass of people. They quickly open it and run in before the door is shut and locked. Okay. So we blend in with the crowd. And um, let's say to them... Good work. Now we need to get out of this hellish city. <clears throat> now, gather a group. We need to get out of this city. I know the way out, Color says. Okay, we, we try. I just I just said that. Galdor nods. I am Galdor, come on. Chris noticed the door and ran to it. We are too late. The crowd is pushing in the other direction and will not let us pass through. Um Hmm. Okay, we try again. The AI is really giving me a hard time today. Now then, we need to get out of this city, Galder says. I just yeah, okay, I just said it. Okay, let's let's continue. Seems that I got the wrong district. Anyway, good work anyway. <laughs> that makes no sense. Um <clears throat> Okay. I'm gonna add this myself. You and the two others run for the main gate as you blend in with the crowd acting normal let's let's try that the group manages to get out of the city gates and into the large fields just outside of it as they walk galder stops to take a few glances at the surrounding city. Okay, yeah, perfect. Um, okay, nice, so we got out, and now we're in the middle of a field, and we have the ability to just go wherever we want to. Um, but I don't think these guys are gonna be my part members. Grith is 15 years old. He's way too young, and Hionard has his own party to look out for, so, um, I'm gonna say, okay, guys, it's been, um, good work. I need you both to go back to what you love the most. Grith, go back home. Hionard, go to the to your group. I will set out to find Freeman. It may be impossible, but that's my only choice. Farewell. I think that's a good a good goodbye for now. A great way to like. Go our separate ways. They each say goodbye and Gulder starts walking in the fields. Well, hope you find him, Gulder, but I think your time is running out, he says to himself as he appears disappears into the trees. Oh wow, he's beginning to dip him doubt himself. That's That's sad, Gulder. You need to believe in yourself, man. You've done so much already. No time to doubt yourself now. Okay, but now we're on our own. We got out, and we know that there is one thing we have to do, and that is find Freeman to maybe be able to get back home. That's the only lead we've got. We don't know where it is, we don't know where we are, just in the outskirts of the city. So, um, we are uh, back from, <laughs> we're back on scratch, like, like in chapter one of book one, where we had no teammates, we were entirely alone. Now we're back at it, but in a new continent. Um, so let's add. You need to find Freeman. The lost prince. But that will be a hard 
objective. So you need to start somewhere to get clues about Freeman's whereabouts. We have no clues at all. You decide to head to where Galdor first found you, the cave. Oh no, no, retry. <laughs> The, that night, you camp in the wilderness. You wonder if you should create a group on the forums and see if you can't recruit some help. <laughs> okay, uh, retry. It was a good start there, but... The forums, man. You immediately decide to visit the closest dungeons and grab the first person you see there. While you do so, Hionard goes back home and Grith goes to his favorite place in the entire... Okay, <laughs> Re <laughs> retry. <laughs> it's not a bad entry, it just doesn't make any sense. You decide to head to the capital and see if you can find out anything there, taking a road that comes close to it. You walk along the road as you think about your options. Okay, so we're heading to the capital of the continent. The capital city of the Loren Empire. Okay, I guess that's that's a that's the best place to start, you know. All kinds of people live there, so we can we can get all sorts of info and most likely uh, we can get info about Freeman from the biggest city on this part of the world. So that makes sense. Um, you walk along the road as you think about your options. Okay. Uh, continue walking. You walk along the road before coming across a bridge. As you look down the bridge, you see a large group of people in ragged clothing, seemingly poor. Oh, this fits the slums description real nice. You know, the slums with all the Valias elves, who was just devastatingly poor. Um, so seeing, like, poor people out in the open actually really matches the the world I've been trying to, to form, to shape. So that's... I really like that detail. Might be a small detail, but to me that was actually pretty... pretty... Nice. Um, okay, so let's ask them if they know anything. Do you know anything about the Prince Freeman's whereabouts? First, let's write. This may be a stupid, a dumb question and you might not have any clue but do you know anything about the prince freeman's whereabouts because we we assume that people doesn't know because um he and Ard told us but let's see if they like have some kind of clue a man in tattered clothing walks up to you looks like he used to Look, looks like he used of the rebel movement against the Empire. You seeking information on the whereabouts of the Lost Prince? He says quite frankly. Yes, I do. Okay, so this guy seems to know a little. He thinks for a moment. Follow me, I have a lead. He leads you past the bridge where, where he stops. Okay, wow, interesting. Let's see if this goes anywhere. Some of the men were involved with trying to capture him, but sadly they failed. You see where the road meets the water? Yes, I do. Because what he's talking about now did happen. The men of Euron were trying to capture him, so this makes sense. He points to a large ship half in the water. Its cannon still trained on the bridge. Okay, we try. He continues. There was a large group of men waiting there. They captured him and brought him down to the riverbank where they tried to throw him, throw him in. Luckily, we managed to save him and escape. Okay. Where did he go after that? So we gotta like track him down. 
I really like that. That's kind of like a mystery thriller vibe. He went back to his castle. We still have access to the sewers. Okay, retry. He never went back to his castle. That's the point. We don't know. Some of us keep hoping he will come back, but he probably was taken to Mortos. Oh! We have a clue! Mortos. Where is that? He stops and looks at you. You haven't heard of it? He walks away from you, clearly upset. Upset? Um... I'm sorry. I'm an outsider. I'm not from this world. You can see it on my human ears. So I apologize. Do you think you can f tell me the way to Mortos? Maybe Mortos is like a holy religious place for the elves. So when I don't know where it is, they kind of get upset. But again, they don't really like outlanders. So that may be proof that I'm an outlander and they suddenly got in and interested in helping me. He turns back to you but doesn't approach anymore. Okay. I know I'm an outsider, but just please give me that clue. Mortos is a land far to the east. It has no natural borders, so it just continues under the sea, making it one of the only places in the known world without a proper landmass. Oh wow! Under the sea? Oh my god, I really like this. Um. Okay, so I should head to the east? How do I get to a land under the sea? This is like mythological. I really enjoy this. Follow the road. It will take you right by the closest port to Mortos. From there you should be able to find a ship and get to Mortos. Wow. Maybe we have to like dive under the sea with some elven magic equipment. Okay. Thank you so much. You have been a great help. <sighs> Let's add to this story. Or, no, do. You say and head and follow the road to the east. And that's where I'm gonna leave this episode for this time, this first chapter. I hope you enjoyed it. I really did. It was so cool to start with book two and and just play as Galder again. And I can't wait for you guys to see it. And yeah, so thank you so much. I'm sorry for my throat being so dry and sore, but um, I'll be better in a day or something. But yeah, thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Love you all. Bye.